Hi, I'm Jake from Northside Custom Crafts, and today we are going to learn how to sharpen some things together. So like I said, we're going to learn this together, which means I've never done before, and I, because it's been intimidating to me for whatever reason, and I feel like if I've been intimidated by it, then then others will be intimidated by it. So if you're, like, if you're an experienced woodworker, then this might not be for you. I invite you to stay, but it's, it's probably not for you. It's gonna be real basic. And part of the reason is people make these high dollar works of art, planes and chisels and, and that kind of thing. And, and it's, it, it's, it's intimidating because how do you sharpen it? What do you do? I don't know what, I don't know how to work it or whatever. So before you run, you need to be able to walk. So just like all things in life, you're probably never going to learn it unless you just dive right in. So that's what we're doing right now. I have a project coming up I need to use some hand tools on. And I've been putting it off once again because I've been intimidating. So I went to Harbor Freight today and I bought these high, uh, diamond hone blocks. Extraordinarily cheap set of chisels and also the same cheap, cheap hand planes. And I got the receipt right here and it cost me... $34 for this right here. So the point of the thing is if I mess these chisels up, I don't care. We can we can go to Harbor Freight, go up the street and get another one and then mess it up too if we need to. And same thing with these planes. These planes were, how much are they? $14. So if we mess them up, as long as we're learning something, we're going to continue growing. So that's going to be the, the, uh, emphasis on this video is to let's learn this and then I went to the blue store and got some chisels a little bit higher quality and so we'll go ahead and sharpen these two and see how they sharp they are out of the box and see the difference between the cheap and the, the these are still cheap but they're not as cheap as these ones so we'll see the difference in that and so what I've been doing so far with hand tools is I have this one here and these are all cobalt brand from Lowe's and I really don't know what I'm doing but this one's good for knocking glue off of cutting boards and things like that and that's all I've used it for the blades all messed up and like I said it's cheap and you get to practice and learn and I have these this little bitty one and I have this this was twenty dollars I think so twenty or thirty dollars so we're not really wasting anything when we when we spend a little bit of time on this and learn how to use this stuff and I bought another one today a little smaller one and we probably won't work on all these I'll probably sharpen one of them and and we'll get to use it and then we'll see if we can make some of those shavings like all the professionals do so first thing I'm gonna do is get all this stuff out of the wrapper and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do after that so what I've done here is I got a piece of melamine which is generally pretty flat and so when we're sharpening we don't have to worry about it being flat or uneven or whatever so I took these honing plates and I put them over here in order and I double-sided taped them down hopefully they'll stay if, when they get wet but I double-sided taped them down and I marked up here with a sharpie 180 260 and 360 and then you get your wet and dry sandpaper I also got it from Lowe's and it's from Gator finishing products they've been doing a lot for the woodworking community so why not get back to them? So that's what the wet and dry sandpaper looks like when you go to buy it and you just kind of rip it up and you get this spray adhesive right here, this Loctite, you can get this anywhere. And you just put it on the back of the sandpaper, put it down. And so I have 600 right here, 1200 right here and 2000 right here. And once again, I wrote down with a Sharpie what the grits were and um, so I won't forget. So I'll get, I'll get the camera and I'll give you a close up right now. So what I've done here is I've clamped this melamine piece with all the sandpaper and honing blocks onto my table so it don't move around. And I went ahead and took these out of the package. There's that one inch Harbor Freight one and here's a one inch 
um, Irwin Tools one and as far as sharpness goes they're about the same they're not very sharp I tried to do the whole take the hair off your arm thing and neither one of them neither one of them will do it so they obviously need sharpened right out of the package but that's what we're here to do so every video I've seen and I've seen a bunch of them because I've been getting ready to do this I've been thinking about it a long time the samurai carpenter has a bunch of good sharpening videos and just look at his work man it's amazing so you know somebody does good work listen to them and just s skip all the thinking you know everything and just listen to them and so what we're gonna do is every sharpening video I've, I've seen so far and they all say to start off with sharpening the back edge of the chisel or plain plain knife or whatever you're gonna do start off by flattening the back side so that's what we're gonna do So you now I can see, there you go, you can see how the very tip of it and a little bit back is, is all shiny. That means that's flat right there. So we're going to go on to the next stones and continue on. Once again, we can see it's flat all the way across that. So now we're going to move to the sandpaper. We're going to 600, 1200, and 2000. 2000 is probably not necessary, but I had it, so we're going to try it anyway. There you go. It's almost like a mirror right there after the 2000 grit. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this angled side right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it flat. I'm just going to do it by hand. You can feel where that goes on that edge and when you go up too high you can kind of feel it and I'm going to turn it sideways and I'm going to go like that. I'm not going to have it like this because it's harder to control. You have more surface area going this way to control it on. So, that's what I'm going to do. And they always talk about a burr on the end of it. I don't know if you can see it. But I can feel it. So I can definitely feel that burr. So I'm going to just do a couple of passes. So I'm pretty happy with sharpening this, this Irwin one. First of all, it's the first one I've sharpened, so I'm sure I'll get better at it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Harbor Freight one and I'm gonna do it and then we'll compare them. So here comes the fast motion action, bam.
So there's your Harbor Freight and your Irwin Tools ones. As far as I can tell right now, I mean, this is obviously a bigger tool. And they are about the same sharp. They acted the same when I sharpened them. Uh, they both will take the hair off your arm. But I guess the test of, of these will be how long they stay sharp or whatever. So we're going to take, so I'm not intimidated anymore. See, it worked. So I'm going to take the things that I just learned from doing these, and I'm going to take this cheap Harbor Freight plane. I'm going to try to cut with it right now, and then I'm going to, I'm going to sharpen it, and then try to cut with it again and see what we get. What we got to lose? Here we go. So here's our $14 plane from Harbor Freight. I had to do a lot of adjusting to even get it, to get it close where it would cut. I haven't sharpened anything, so I'm gonna do some shavings now and then we're gonna sharpen everything and then do it again and we're gonna see the difference. <laughs> it's hard to push through that blade that blade starts off dull, 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 but this is a start. And I would imagine if I'm doing this, other people are going to do it too. So this is something to be embarrassed about. We just got to practice. So here's our blade that's cutting the wood. It's gonna cut like that. This goes on top right here. I've heard this called a chipper, I think. You could take a real quick look at it and tell that it's not flat. So that needs to get flat so that it can set flat on here and no wood will get shoved in there or whatever it, the wood you want the wood to fly right past this i'm assuming so i'm going to flatten this one and just enough to get it flat so it'll sit on this flat and then i'm going to do our regular sharpening just like we did on the chisel chisels on this one So just a little bit of flattening in this right here, this chipper, whatever, should sit on there flatter and, and deflect the wood chips better. So we'll see. But we're going to do some time lapse. I'm going to sharpen this other blade and we're going to see what I can do. I sharpened up this cobalt one also it would make it would make some of these at first but you'd be amazed how much just a little bit of sharpening it'll do This is hard maple. Under. 
So we got to do a few things today. The first thing was sharpen these chisels and, and uh, compare them. And as of right now, they're, I'd call it a tie. When the difference is going to be how long they last. And my money would probably be on the Irwin if I was a betting man. No offense, Harbor Freight, but there we have it. And then we got to compare these planes, one from Harbor Freight and one from Cobalt. And they look pretty much exactly the same except for the paint job, but they're not the same. This one seems to have a better blade and the adjustments, although they look exactly the same as the Harbor Freight ones, it is so much easier to adjust this one than this one. Now with that being said, if your only objective was to buy a cheap plane and learn how to sharpen and learn how to make some of these, which it'll do it, go ahead and get it. And if you get good at adjusting this thing that's hard to adjust, and then you get a good one in your hand, you're going to be excellent at adjusting a plane. So, so there's that. And then the, the last thing was, I'm over the intimidation of sharpening things and, and messing with planes. I've never been able to make to make curls like this come off come off a of hard maple or any other wood for that matter i just didn't know what i was doing and the lesson is just get out there and and do it and get some practice and the next thing you know you'll, you'll be good at it so if there's any experienced woodworkers out there that have stuck around for this whole video go ahead and leave in the comments you know some tips and tricks or and all that be nice <laughs> i'd already admitted i don't know what i'm doing so if this is your first time seeing one of my videos, go ahead and subscribe. We like it when you do that. We'll see you next time. Y'all be good.